my background came from, I started off in hairdressing, okay. um, but quickly knew throughout the training that it was men's fashion and more barbering that I wanted to get into. So when I approached, uh, and especially after I qualified, um, I knew that that was the real I wanted to go to, which was over 11 years now. Okay. So I made the jump from hairdressing straight into barbering. Training was done at a company called Saks at the time. Uh, it was under a guy called Mark Willey. Uh, I worked there for just under four years. Uh, qualified and then obviously went, you know, went further on from that. But um, yeah, and then jump ship and kind of literally tried to get in as many barb shops as I could. Okay. This is now coming up to the, uh, I've been on my own now for almost three years. Um, but we've been in this, uh, this shop now 18, 18 months. Came from so uh, in 2011, Aona was born um, purely as a passion project. Um, I wanted a brand and a lifestyle brand to be associated with barbering and tattooing and you know pretty much everything that I'm about. Um, and then I wanted to carry on, you know, the clothing side, you know, and put it all under one umbrella. So Aona was born in 2011. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's about four tiers to the brand. You've obviously got the barber shops, uh, the Brighton one, and then the Cologne store, and then we've obviously got the Barber Life Expo, and then you've got the clothing line. Actually, there's five tiers, and then we've got the pop-up uh, side to the business as well. Um, but as you know, the Barber Life Expo is now it's come off the back of the pop-up ventures with me and Brad, uh, and it was our first one this year. It's um, it's super tough and very, very stressful. Uh, I'm just really, really lucky uh, that I've got support from my family, really, and I think that comes from it. Uh, it's not just me and the company. You know, I've got a business partner, there's a director, I've got a personal assistant, we've got sales agents, we've got an agency that helps us manufacture the clothing, my wife is a head designer, obviously I've got, you know, the guys in here, Jay, that, you know, that literally takes care of the barbershop side. I've got Stefan and, um, and Stephen over in Cologne. So it's, people think it's just me, it's not. It's probably when you break it down about 15, 16 people you know, involved in AO and O. Um, it's, my wife constantly has a go at me because I'm a workaholic. Uh, and I think that just comes from me messing about for years and years and years and not really focusing too much. Um, so in the last four years, I've really had to focus and you know, push the brand. But I never thought that I'd ever get to this stage anyway. So I'm just, you know, going for it really, and just taking every opportunity that I can. Um, but it's really difficult to juggle, you know, but it just comes down to having the support, you know, and that's the main thing, and I've got that, so I'm lucky. I think you've just got to stay really positive and you've got to understand that you're only here kind of once. I don't want to go too deep, but, um, and you only get one, one chance really. And I just, I just don't want to ever look back when I'm sat around a table with a couple of my mates, my old school mates, with regret. So I'd rather just go, you know, full on um, and just take all the opportunities that I can. And it's just working. I think if you've got that, I've always, it was always drilled into me when I was a kid that you've got, you know, whatever you put in, you get out. You know, and you've got to work hard. Nothing in life is free. You know, like people have not seen, you know, I've been in. You know, the, the barbers that I work with, they're all, especially with Brad, you know, Khalil, Shane, Brian, and a couple of other lads, we've been in it over 10 years, but you've not really seen the struggle. You're only seeing what's on Instagram now or in the last couple of years with, through social media. Because it's got so popular, you didn't see 10 years ago what we were going through. It's making 20 pound a day, like doing, cutting like two or three haircuts. And that was every day. Some days I didn't cut at all. Because, you know, like barbering back then wasn't fashionable. It wasn't on trend, but now it is. It just seems that because you've got history and people can see that you're working hard and you're dedicated to that, and you've built relationships over the years and they've seen you start from pretty much nothing and they support you all the way through, it makes it a lot easier, especially for me and my business, to be able to do these other things and be able to travel. But you've got to take it back years and years and years to find out that it was a massive struggle. You know, and I've self-funded everything up until recently, and I've lost a hell of a lot. You know, there's been times where it's worked and it's failed. And, but then you learn, and it's just a life lesson, isn't it? You, just, you learn from your mistakes, 
and to progress and you know and to get successful. But you know, people come up to me all the time. You're killing it. You're killing it. You don't see what goes on. You know, like it may look like I'm a swan, but underneath the water, I'm just my legs are going like crazy. You know, and I, and I always kind of feel like I'm treading water all the time. You know, but when people around me keep on going. Oh yeah, you're doing really well. You're doing really well. I still have the same stresses, and I have more stresses. Because like you just said, I have to balance my home life and I'm supposed to be a dad and a business owner and design a new collection and go here and I've got all these stresses and pressures on me but it just comes down to that support network. If you've got no support, it just all falls apart. Okay. You've got to want it as well. You know, it's how much do you want? You know, I, mean, I, want, I just want to enjoy everything. I want to be happy and I want to enjoy these opportunities I get. That's what it comes down to. We, we, get, we don't turn away anybody and we don't class ourselves as just purely traditional. We do everything traditional, but we try to bring it into the modern world and we've always stated that. Um, but it, I just, it, all, it, all it is about for me is to service in my clientele and serving the people that come into the shop. So if they just want a number one all over or they want a skin fade or a pompadour, we can do everything. You know, and that's the kind of team that I want to build. Um, I spent years and years and years doing all the classic cuts and now it's now going into more textured and longer hair. But luckily because of my background and because of my training, I'm comfortable and experienced enough that I can manage all those kind of haircuts. So um, I don't want to pigeonhole myself, we just, we're here to, to service our clientele and anybody that walks through the door. Uh, and I'm proud that we can do that. Obviously I've been working with Brad now for almost five years. Um, and then, you know, recently, you know, I've been following Shane, um, you know, and then working with Brian and Khalil and all the guys that we work with, you know, I'm learning all the time. I don't know if you saw it at the Barber Life Expo, I turned around to Shane and I was just like, you need to do me a one-to-one -one training session, like I've never cut hair, I'm literally a student that's just walked into your, you know, like your, one of your lessons or your barber shop and I've asked you to teach me how to cut hair and I don't know. You know, and just from that, I cut completely different. And I've been cutting hair over 10 years, just from that one lesson. You know, it just changed my whole way of thinking. Okay. So, you know, I'm always up for learning. You never stop learning. I think if you do, then it's time to maybe try and do something else. Um, being able to um, support my family um, through this. That's, you know, like, so they don't have to struggle and they also get to come along on events and they also get to be a part of it. You know, my wife and kids are in the shop pretty much every day. Or if I'm at an event and they can come, because it doesn't interfere with childcare or, you know, something else like that, or, you know, what my wife's doing, they get to experience everything. You know, and that's a massive, that's a massive, massive, you know, positive thing for me. Being able to, you know, like, experience everything with my family. That's the biggest one. And to take the lads away and, you know, like, and offer all these experiences to everybody else. Um, you know, I want, I want all, everybody, in, you know, in, in the shops and in the brand and stuff to experience everything that I do. Okay, so it's a sharing thing. It's a sharing thing, yeah. It's paying it forward as well. I think it goes back to um, always struggling to find, you know, a strong, um, you know, confident clipper that, you know, I felt it, it was just a robust clipper. Um, and I was always using the wall super taper. And then I got the opportunity about three years ago to go and work in LA. Um, I didn't take any kit. Um, the guys at the proper barber shop said I can use all theirs. And they literally brought out a massive array of clippers. There was the seniors and there was Andis. Um, you know, I was using, um, what else did I use? I used some Osters as well. And my mind was blunt. Just, you know, like literally just from the, they're just so powerful and they were literally just, my blending just seemed to be a lot different, the fades and everything just seemed to be a lot crisper and, um, and then I was desperate. So when I came back, I bought a pair of um, Oster Fast Feeds, um, but I was struggling to get the adapter. Some would work, some wouldn't, and it still wasn't right, you know, and so I just reverted straight back to the walls again, because um, the frequency was always off. Um, and I, but I was desperate, desperate to get that power back. Um, and then, yeah, you came along. <laughs> Massively, it changed everything, especially for me and you know, and everyone else that I was working with. It was kind of a breath of fresh air. 
everything just seemed to work. You know, and because I'd collected clippers, you know, and buying clippers all the time, and it wasn't working from, you know, I was getting um, adapters from Matalac around the corner. It just, it just weren't working, or, you know, like it would make a horrible noise. And the first time you brought it in, you know, and I've shown you what I was doing, it was terrible. Uh, and then you just turn it on, and I was just like, you're having it. Um, it's just been able to um, allow me to use all the clippers that I've ever wanted to use, and what I've used in the past. Um, and I've just got the power back now, so everything just seems to run so much better. It's a lifesaver. Mm -hmm. And I'm enjoying, you know, and I'm enjoying again using the machines. And I think that's part of it. I think once you, because I've used them in America before, and I know exactly what they can do, and when you come back and you know that they're not running right, it's frustrating. You know, because it's just not working right, and you you can see the difference in the cut and the blend and the fade. And then as soon as you brought me, you know, like in the frequency changer, the converter, that was it. You know, so I was off running again. You know, it's it's brilliant. Found your feet. Yeah, <laughs> off and running. It's been brilliant. I think it comes down to again, you know, that the whole knowledge side of it and understanding the tools that you need specifically for what you want to achieve. You know, but. I'm a big believer in, you know, if you're going to do something, you need the right tools, you need to invest in the right tools. So investing in your product, you know, getting the right, you know, clippers is valuable for them to become a better barber. You know, you have to invest in your tools, everybody does. And if you're not willing to do that, I don't understand why, you know, you've chosen that specific route or that trade or skill set. You know, so it's invaluable, you know, to invest in the right tools and the right clippers, you know, and, and make sure that you know you're getting everything running right. There's no point just spending a load of money and in, in, you know and then get the wrong converter. That doesn't make sense to me, you know. Um, and it's only now for using, you know, the the converter. You understand that, you know. And all the guys now are using it, and you can just see, you know, the the standard of, you know, of everything that's coming out of the shop.